imagine it's 1400 years ago. It's the night of Ashura. You see people leaving in their hundreds and thousands from the camp of Imam Hussein. They've left him. You turn around and look at Imam Hussein and you see sadness and sorrow in his face. In that moment, you, Shabir, decided to stay and be the 73rd companion of Imam Hussein. Now the morning of Ashura comes. The Imam says to you, it's up to you to help me in any way you want. Wherever you see yourself fitting, you can be there. Where would you volunteer? Where would you put your service? How would you aid the Imam on the day of Ashura? Would you help Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas go and retrieve water? Maybe stop the arrow coming into his eyes? Or would you stand in front of Imam al Hussein when they are praying and take the arrows? Or would you stand next to Bibi Sakina and maybe help her and move that person who came and pulled her earrings? Or would you stand with Sayyidah Zainab and not allow anyone to come in near them? She is giving you the choice. Obviously, um, this is a hypothetical scenario. And I'm sure that everyone who's listening to me, everyone who's watching me, wishes that they could be in this position. And, I'm sh and myself, I've thought of it so many times as well. On the day of Ashura, I'm sure that all the people that were there by the side of Imam al-Hussain would have been fighting with each other to, to be the first ones to be martyred. And to be completely honest with you, on that day, first and foremost, I would have asked my master where, where he saw me himself and how best I could serve him. If he gave me the option, I would also want to be the first one to be martyred. Whether that's standing in front of him, protecting him whilst he was saying his prayers, whether that's going to the battlefield. Obviously what saddens me is that after everything unfolded, the ladies of the, of the Ahl al-Bayt were treated in the way they were. But I think for myself, what I would just be running out, running out to serve the Imam, running out to be the first one who, who could say that they gave everything they had for the Imam. So yeah, I, I, would, I would want to be the first one to be martyred. That's it. Now suppose you finished work today and you drive back home. Your mum, your dad, your brother, they open the door and they let you in. You see your family is in a frantic state. You see everyone's running, getting stuff ready, gathering food, f fruits, drinks. You ask your dad, what's going on? Have we got guests? They turn around and, and say, a man has come to see you personally. And he is waiting for you in the living room. So you go to the living room, you open the door, and you see Imam al Hussein sitting there waiting for you. What would you want to say to him in that moment? Um, to be completely honest with you, um, I'll tell you a story. I, um, I hadn't had the for good fortune of going to Karbala until I reached the age of 27. And the person who I'd gone to Karbala with, I had one, I asked them for one favour, one request. And that was 
that the first time I saw the Shrine of Imam Al Hussein al Islam, not just for me to go there as as the average person does down the down the sort of through the entrance to, and there's a slight hill as you go down or slight slope and then you get to the shrine I wanted him to take me by my hand and I would close my eyes and I wanted him to put me or place me right in front of the shrine so that when I opened my eyes I would see the shrine just like that without the whole anticipation side of things and when he did that I just collapsed so Trying to answer that question would be impossible for me because at that moment I'd be so overwhelmed with emotion that I don't, I don't know what I would do. I'm sure I'd kiss his feet. I'm sure I would, I, I would be crying. Um, and I couldn't tell you to be honest. I couldn't tell you what I would say, but I know that whatever it is, it would be coming from the bottom of my heart and I would be in floods of tears. Now you have sat with him, and it's time to say your farewell. He's leaving the house. What would you in that situation, what would you do in that situation? What would you say to him before he leaves for the last time? I'd, I'd want to embrace him before he leaves. For me, the aim of my life and the mission in my every breathing second is to serve him in any way that I can. So I would ask him for advice, I would ask him for instruction and ask him in what way does he see me being the best possible servant that I can be. I would supplicate and ask him to pray for me to be able to achieve that and to be able to be the best servant that I can be for him. And in life I want nothing more than that. And that's all I would ask him before he would leave. So at the beginning, I asked you to imagine we was in the night of Ashura 1400 years ago. Then on the day of Ashura, how would you serve? now? Knowing the events that took place then, it might be easy to say I would go and fetch water with Abel Fadl Abbas, or I would go stand with Sayyid Zainab, or I would go and defend the children and the women of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Now I am asking you today, in this day and age, what have you done for our 12th Imam? What would you like to do, and what do you think he deserves from us? What advice would you give our children? That's an interesting question. Um, the twelfth Imam, alayhi salam, alayhi salam. Um, Now, I believe, truly believe, that the whole event of Karbala and the mission they was trying to propagate was a message of reform, a message of love and tolerance within society. I think that remembering the Ahlul Bayt, crying for Imam al Hussein salam, and even awaiting the 12th Imam in itself is good, but unless you can put that into practice, I feel that it is defeating the purpose of it. Um, for me, trying to improve society by doing what you can is the most important thing. First and foremost, the reason why I chose to go down the path that I've gone down in life in every aspect, for example, even in the work that I do, is to serve the Ahlul Bayt, um, to try and help people, to try and improve society. Um, and I think that's the, the message I'd give, give my children, give all the children at home, is that the Imam of your time, all the Imams, want you to be the best possible human being that you can crying for them, remembering them is a very important part of that because you develop love for them. But that love should translate itself in improving society, in helping your community, be they, you know, whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim, Shia or non-Shia, helping them in order to try and better society and to just be the best human being that you can be. 
don't have any malice in your heart, do things with the best of intentions. And that is when you can say that you're a true lover of the Ahlul Bayt. Um, so, I mean, that would be what I would say. In terms of what the Imam deserves, I feel that I'm not in, I'm not in any position to, to say that because he deserves so much more than what I can say. He deserves everything that I've got, everything that uh, you've got. He, he deserves the very best. But I think in this day and age, what we can do for him is to prepare the groundwork as communities, try to show unity, try to show togetherness, and to try and spread the mission of the Ahlul Bayt, not because we can convert other people, but because we can teach a message of love and tolerance, respect between everyone. And that is doing justice to the mission and the message of the Ahlul Bayt. <laughs> الا کراز خدایی خدا کند که بیایی خدا کند تو نور خدا کنم خدا